Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out the best Figma and Adobe XD plugins. So this is a compilation video of both. I have chapters in this video, so you can always skip to the tool that you use the most. But I suggest checking out both and seeing what both tools can do. All right, so let's begin with the Figma plugins. The first one is Better File Thumbnails. And Better File Thumbnails is not just a very simple tool, but a very extensive and useful tool. So let's install this and try this out. So I already have a UI kit that I've popped up right here, and I'm gonna bring up Better File Thumbnails. Of course, you can quick create something, but for this one, I will use a thumbnail builder that they have. So in this case, they create a custom thumbnail for you and you can see how it will look in the Figma community or on your desktop, wherever you have this file. Of course, you can create your own thumbnails and publish it, but for this one, we're just gonna use the free option. You can edit the content just by clicking it, so you can have a separate title. So for this one, I'll, I'm gonna say uh, Pop Messenger. Okay, I'm just gonna name this Pop Messenger and we're gonna add a project description. Uh, an amazing messenger, <laughs> you know, simple as that. So you can do that, which will be a part of your thumbnail. If you want, you can even have a little emoji right here. So I'm just gonna use like, this smiley or happy face right here and you have a nice little emoji as well. You can bring the text to the middle, to the right. So that's pretty useful. You can even change the style of the text to kind of fit your uh, thumbnails or to fit wherever you have this in your team or whatever. So if you have this in your team and your team all uses say something like an impact kind of font, then this would be really cool. Of course, you have your project status. So you can even define what stage this project is at. So I'm gonna say in progress and it will say in progress on your main screen as well. You can even have a custom color. So you can choose what colors you want. So maybe it can fit your company theme or whatever. So it goes better there. You can even remove the emoji if you like. So you have full control on how you edit this and you can create a separate page on your project so that this thumbnail doesn't disrupt or disturb you on your main project. Also, I like this little message on top. <laughs> so a simple straightforward theme builder or thumbnail builder for your project so that you can easily identify different projects, your team can customize stuff, etc. And it will look better on your dashboard as well. The next plugin is amazing. It's called the Pro Layout Panel. And as you can see, it basically extends your layout panel that you have on the right and makes it into the super useful pro layout panel. A much needed upgrade to the layout panel for sure. So if I go back here, I go back into my design, bring out pro layout panel and it opens up as any plugin does. And you can just place it on the right so you have this layout panel like an extension, on, honestly. And anything that you have on screen, you can see all the options and everything change live. You can have all the constraints. So you can have constraint uh, to the right, to the center, to the left. So quick constraints, vertical constraints as well. You can activate auto layout from here as well and edit everything individually from here. And at any point of time, you can switch between auto layout and non-auto layout, which is something that is not really available uh, in Figma. You have to again and again apply the auto layout, but here it's super easy. If you do find any errors, do let me know, of course. But as you can see, it works like a charm. Again, something that adds more functionality to Figma, an easier way to do something that you could already do, but took a lot of time for sure. So the next plugin is from Google itself. This is called Material Theme Builder. I've already showcased this plugin before, but it's so nice and so useful that I had to have this on this list. So if I go back to my little UI kit here, and if I say material theme build, you have a lot of quick shortcuts for surfaces, color schemes, etc. But I'm just gonna open the plugin and show you guys. It has a nice little UI here, and, it, and once you basically activate this plugin, it creates a sort of a library or design library for you here. So you have all the text, the colors, the styles, everything inside the theme as well, very well organized. As you can see, all the colors, etc., have been organized for the theme as well. And at any point of time, you can either create a custom theme. So you can pick the colors and create a theme with it. So it'll add it to this little design library here or you can pick from images. So if you have a project which still doesn't have a color uh, palette or a color theme yet, I actually have this nice little image here that I've you know kind of installed on my desktop. And as you can see, it changes the source color. So whatever image you kind of pick up, it's gonna pick a source color and you can quickly swap from it. Apart from that, you can even create a light or a dark mode. So whatever there is, the tokens will be changed according to that. As you can see, it has a light mode here on the right under color styles and a dark mode. So it will 
automatically add it to either one of those or both i think this is a great thing to kind of have i think this is a great tool to have especially if you have um, if you are managing a design system or a design library and colors a completely new theme which you can even name from inside this is going to give it my name and you can just say add theme and this could be a nice little theme here apart from that you can even import material tokens in uh using the dsp so if you have a file that you have under dsp you can even import it here as well i think a great tool to manage your your colors your fonts your design systems and libraries in general this next one i'm excited to share with you guys it's called b front and it's basically a way to learn figma as well as design using a tool inside figma itself so all you need to do is go to whichever file you have and say b front and it will bring up a little nice panel here you can quickly just sign in using whatever email you have you're basically welcomed by a, a slew of courses that they have built inside figma itself so you have figma basics you have registration process product card so whatever you want to kind of build you have these some are under a pro license so you probably have to buy this but the figma basics course i say is one of the best here you have step by step guide so you can start the course once the course is started they will create a new frame here and they will ask you to do a certain slew of tasks so select the move tool so here i'll select the move tool click on the star and move this layer to x300 and y40 so basically this i think um, is the star here and i'm going to move it to 300 300 by 40 ah see so the task is now complete as they have said here it's so quick select the move tool click on the rectangle and move this layer to so again i'm going to do the same here i'm going to figure it out on my own i like the fact that they have uh, you know they're making us figure it out ah see <laughs> what's this going to make select the move tool click on the like so basically showing you how to move certain elements to certain fixed positions so as to have a better alignment uh, as you can see now you have this lesson complete all of them are check mark and you can say next lesson and it creates a new file for you so you can't really see the older lessons anymore i really like how it's interactive how it even displays errors so if you make an error or any problem it will display it here and the tasks are easy to understand and quick to learn i think this is a great tool if you're going to learn figma kudos to you b front gram r is one of the best for me because i make a lot of spelling mistakes and grammatical errors especially if i'm typing quickly or just casually doing something but if you're working on a project you don't you want to avoid any of those problems then i suggest using this plugin so for example i'll come back to this page and i'm going to type out something hi my name is puneet what is yours so if i go to my plugin here and i say grammar there are a bunch of other tools for this but i think this is the quickest and easiest one to use if i select something it will show me everything that is correct and everything that is wrong so of course it it thinks my name is uh an error so i can always turn it into capital p if i misspell something here and if i say check solutions see namer is now selected so i can quickly switch to name Hi my name is Puneet and what is yours I think this is kind of like Grammarly but if Grammarly made a plugin for Figma this is what it would look like you can even switch to languages I think this is one of the best ones here you can switch to German Russian Italian Japanese even I know a lot of designers who work in Japan so you guys can use this as well it has a 5 day free trial but after that I don't think it's I think it's a reasonable price as well. Again, you can auto fix all the errors and it will do it for you. Of course, it thinks my name is an error. I think that's the only problem here is that it thinks that my name is an error. I'm also going to mention one or two other plugins for spell checking if you want to check that out as well. I for one love shadows, but what if you can create shadows with a light source almost as if you were using something like Blender. So, beautiful shadows allows you to do that. So if I go back here and I say beautiful shadows and if I have any element here selected so what it will do is allow me to use this dot here as a sunlight so as you can see on screen even on the gray rectangle there the shadows are moving whenever I'm moving this light source so if I make this into say a white rectangle you'll be able to see it better ah uh, see how it turns into a light source and you can increase or decrease the brightness of this light source So it becomes like an interactive tool. So even if you don't know a lot about creating shadows, you don't have experience in graphic design, this will help to create a nice little 
shadow, a beautiful shadow, might I say. Uh, I have this text selected here. If I have, if I had this rectangle selected, it switches to the rectangle. So that's a nice little touch. Apart from that, it allows you to select inner shadow or drop shadow. So even if you're working on say new morphism or skew morphism, it allows you to do this as well. It's so cool. Also, you can change things like color, the intensity and everything around that, just like you can do in Figma but you have this nice little light source to kind of work with and you can then apply it to all the other elements as well at the same time. Anytime you want to ch change the shadow, Figma allows you to pick the plugin from here and it quickly opens up just like you would expect it. Absolutely love it. So a design friend of mine, Nitish, came up with this super awesome plugin called Ink Wireframe with 700 plus elements to pick from. Nitish, you're basically giving everything for free. That's pretty awesome. So if I go to my project and I say Ink Wireframes, uh, a little window pops up with all the wireframe elements right here. You can quickly search for something. So if I want a graph, it will basically give me all the types of graphs that he's created. And I can quickly just drag and drop and it basically loads it right here. And as you can see, everything is so casually created, so it looks like a wireframe. So your product manager won't ask, is this a wireframe or is this the final design? <laughs> you can quickly edit this as per your liking, of course, but you save it inside the design library right here. So you can even switch to different variants. So you can remove the label, you can add a label. So every element here has multiple variants. So you can switch to different variants from right here. And if you want a quick change, you can swap the instances as well. So it will just swap with whatever you want right here. Every element has multiple instances, which I absolutely love. And the kind of flexibility the, uh, the creators provides is absolutely insane. I think go check this out. This is a must have for every designer, Ink Wireframes. Now this is a plugin I've almost fallen in love with. It's called Open Icon and it's absolutely amazing. So inside your project, you can choose between different open source libraries that it has. You can have Font Awesome, Fluent, Material, Feather, Remix, Hero Icons, Box Icons, every kind of library you can think of, it has listed. And it's almost endless. As you can see, I keep on scrolling and Icon Pack is literally the last one here. So insane amount of icons. So I want something from Material Design Icon Library. I can go inside it and then search for the ones I want. So if I want something like a plus icon, Okay, or an addition icon, I can always do that. So you have all the ones that it has a plus in. So if I say plus one and just drag it out here, it will say plus one with a frame, which is really nice. You can even bookmark a library to kind of favorite it, if you know what I mean. So it, it favorites your uh, the ones that you want and it puts it on the top, which I like. I think it's a very nice touch. You can even read about all the icon sets and what kind of licenses they have before even using it in your project from right here. Apart from that, all of these are SVGs, so you can freely move it around and you know add your own colors, whatever you like inside it here as well. Unfortunately, I wish it had this feature at any point of time, I could just click on this frame and it would have the plugins option so I can quickly change to another icon. That's the only uh, problem I'd say it has. But once you have an icon, I think it's pretty good. Let's move on to our Adobe XD segment. Now for all you Adobe XD lovers, there were fewer ones that I could find. All right, so the first plugin is called Addy Accessibility 2. And you guys already know accessibility is very important to choose contrast in your design, to create something or to add illustrations, buttons, etc. This tool allows you to check, to check as well as fix contrasts and for people who are colorblind, etc., to check accessibility. So at any point of time, you can bring the D accessibility tool. Under this, you have contrast checker, air text generator, colorblind simulator, touch size checker. So whatever you like, it basically can allow you to see everything here itself. And the colorblind mode allows you to kind of uh, generate a simulation. You can even generate artboards and the artboard will now start to look like this. So it is allowing you to see how certain colorblind people might look at your interface like. I think this is super useful, especially if you're ma uh, trying to make something with complete empathy towards everyone. Of course, you can even check contrast with things like buttons, etc. So I have this button. I know, okay, there is this gray text over this yellow. So it's a good contrast. If, if there was something like a yellow text and a, a yellow background or a white text or a yellow background, it will totally disagree with that. So if I bring here, as you can see, it shows me that it's only a single A. You need to kind of bring it to three 
green is here. You can even change things from here. So it'll allow you to kind of edit some properties so that you can come to the final conclusion. And again, it will live check everything, which I really like. You can even have touch size checker. So if there's a button, it will show you according to say a certain device, say Galaxy S10, it will show you, okay, so for Apple, there's less touch uh, touch area and for Android, there's more, etc. So here it is just showing you how much area a user has to tap or touch on something. And it can really define how well it, a user can interact with the interface. The next one is called UI Copy. And I think it's a must have for all Adobe XD users. I think it's a great plugin. However, it does have, uh, you know, its downsides. I'm gonna put a screenshot on of the things it can do but it, it is a paid tool. So if you're a copywriter using Adobe XD or you're someone who wants to really work on your uh, copy or your, the text that you have on screen, content, etc., then I think it's a great tool to have. But again, a good mention, but again, it's a paid tool. You guys can always check out their website for more. Lottie files for Adobe XD is something that a lot of people went crazy for. Once you have Lottie files activated, you can basically drag and drop things like icons, animations, etc. Drag it and then put it right here. And the best part about this feature in Adobe XD is that you can play it from here and you can even change whether it should play automatically, play on tap, you know, no playback at, at all, edit playback, etc. You can do all that good stuff here in Adobe XD. So I think it works well with the Adobe XD tool itself. Inside the tool itself, you can also access your private files if you have any. I have a few, but I don't think you can view it here. You can even import JSON files with this tool. So if you're having trouble importing JSON files in Adobe XD, then you can do it with this tool and it will create a Lottie file for you right here. I think that's pretty useful. The next plugin is called Storyboard Editor and it does what it says. So basically, if you want to create a storyboard for your uh, UX projects, it will allow you to create a storyboard right here in Adobe XD. And once you have all the settings ready, it creates a storyboard panel for you. So you don't even have to worry about how will I create this storyboard and everything you can access from here. So it automatically updates what elements you've selected. So here is the timer. You can change the, you know, the total, num uh, the time, etc. Literal artboards, you can add titles and text. You can say, okay, this is my title and you can add it from here. Again, a really cool tool that you can explore, create custom artboards, etc. with it, add different elements. You gotta figure this out. I think this is one of those tools you gotta figure it out yourself and really kind of experiment with it. I think a really cool tool to create storyboards nonetheless. Last but not the least is called Repeat Grid Text Editor. So you, if you have a nice little repeat grid, um, I'm just gonna create one right here. You have my name right here. I'm just gonna change the color of this. Yep, awesome. So now I'm gonna create a quick repeat grid. This is nice. And what it allows me to do is uh, choose what text I want. So here I can individually edit the text. So here I can say Simran. Okay, again, a very simple plugin, but, but it does something really nice. I think it's quick to do and it fixes a problem with the repeat grid, which is just uh, editing single text. I think it's super useful there. I hope you like that video guys. I create such content every Monday and Thursday. So if you aren't, so if you aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the like button if you like the video. I'll see you next time, same place, same time. Until next time, take care, God bless.